In this example, we will learn how to map two genes. So in order to map the genes, we need a heterozygous animal, and we need also another animal that will serve for the test cross, and that will reveal the gametes produced by the other animal. So if ever you work with X-linked genes, then you just can take a male that is recessive instead of a homozygous recessive animal, just because the male doesn't have two X, so it will be, uh, you, you can do it with that. Now here, the flies we have are with long bristles or short bristles and gray or ebony body. So you have two genes, basically. The first gene is coding for the bristles and the second gene is coding for the body. Now you will want to test this individual with the long bristle and gray body with the tester animal, which will be the animal with the homozygous recessive phenotype, which is the uh, long, the short bristles, sorry, and the ebony body. So if we look at the uh, first one, which has the long bristles and the gray body, uh, it is an individual that is heterozygous. We say that at the beginning. And the one with the short bristles and the ebony bodies uh, are homozygous recessive, and they serve to test the gametes of the first one. So when the first one produces their gametes, um, if the two genes are on different G on different chromosomes, sorry, they uh, will assort independently, meaning that you will produce four types of gametes in equal numbers with uh, one quarter of each of the S plus E plus, S plus E, S E plus, and S E, and that will result in offspring that will have the exact same phenotypes in the exact same numbers. And that is because the second parent is homozygous recessive for all these genes. So you will see in the offspring exactly those phenotypes. Now, if the two genes are carried on the same chromosome and not on two different chromosomes, then the occurrence of gamete types will be different. If we look at uh, what may happen, when you produce the gametes, the meiosis will happen. And that means that crossing over may happen between the two genes. It is not mandatory, but it may happen. So since, since it doesn't always occur, you will not uh, necessarily have it. You will have a certain proportion of the gametes that will show the crossing overs, but most of them will have the parental types where you don't have any crossing overs. So you will have gametes that contain either S plus E plus or S E, and that's it. Now, some of them will be the result of a crossing over occurring between the two genes, and then you will have some gametes with S plus E or S E plus, and these are the result of a crossing over occurring between the two genes. In the second parent, even if you have crossing overs, since the two genes are with the equivalent alleles, all the gametes will carry the S and E, and you will see the proportion of gametes which have the parental types or the recombinant types in the first parent based on the number of offspring you will see in the next generation. So what are the offspring uh, observed in uh, what we have here? We observed 537 flies with the S plus E plus phenotype. We observed also 542 flies with the SE phenotype. Those two categories are the parental types. We also have 76 and 75 uh, type of flies that come from the recombination of the chromosomes in the gametogenesis. So you have 75 S plus E and 70, yeah, 75 S, E+, plus, which are recombinant types. It means that also none of the parents have those combinations. So now the first hypothesis we may want to look at is whether or not the genes assort independently or if they have a linkage. 
So if they assort independently, we should observe, as usual, 9331 of the S plus E plus, S plus E, S E plus, and S E. Is it what we see? Not exactly, but we uh, will want to see if there is a real difference or if the difference is just due to random chains. So if the difference is not a real difference, it will be the null hypothesis and we will we want to calculate how likely that hypothesis is. So if we calculate that, we need to do the uh, expected ratios. So it means that we need to calculate the ratios of flies that we would have had of the S plus E plus, S plus E, S E plus, and S E if we had had 9331. So we have in total 1230 flies. Now, if we divide that by 16, which is a total of 9331, we obtain 77. So 9 over 16 would be uh, 692 flies. 3 uh, over 16 makes uh, 231 flies, that should be S plus E, um, or you also need to have 231 flies, that should be S E plus, and 1 over 16, which means 77 flies, which would be S E. In fact, we observe different numbers, so let's do a chi-square between the expected parental and recombinant types. So the parental types expected are 693 and 77. So it is a total of 70, uh, 770 flies. The recommended types, we should obtain 231 twice, which is 462 flies. We actually observed 537 plus 542, which means 1,079 flies with the parental types, and we obtained 151 flies of the recommended types. So you do the calculation as usual, and the chi-square value will give you 333, which means that uh, you uh, put that in the chi-square table with just one degree of freedom because we have just two categories, the parentals and the recombinants. If we wanted to accept the null hypothesis, we should have had a value of 3.8 and uh, or less to accept the null hypothesis as very likely. However, here with a value of 333, we uh, can only reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a real difference between the results that we had and the expected values for unlinked genes. So the genes S and E are clearly linked. They are located on the same chromosome and we can then try to find the distance between S and E. And we will do that with the frequency of recombination. So if we agree that S and E are on the same chromosome, then uh, we need to determine at which distance they are. And if there is a large distance between them, it is very likely that there is a crossing over between them. If a crossing over occurs between them, it will decrease the proportion of parentals. So the S plus E plus and the S E individuals will be less numerous than what we expect. And the proportion of recombinants to so the S plus E and the S E plus should be more numerous than what we expect from a 9331 ratio. If, in contrast, the two genes are uh, very uh, close to each other, so there is a small distance between them, then the chains of crossing over will decrease, and we will, in this case, increase the proportion of the parental types, so the S plus E plus or the S E individuals will be more frequent because you don't have a lot of recombinations between them. They always or most often go together. And you will, as a result, also decrease the proportion of recombinants, so the S plus E and the S E plus, 
because again, you have less crossing overs, so less chances of having these two genes uh, put on the different chromosome. We should get closer to zero recombinants and just parentals, which would be the case if the two genes were a single gene coding for two traits. So we will use the ratio of recombinants to calculate the distance between both genes. Basically, the distance gives the probability of recombination. So the ratio of recombinants, it's pretty easy. We just need to go back to the numbers we had. We uh, see here that we obtained 151 recombinants and we obtained 1079 parentals. So that will be the numbers that we will use to calculate the ratio. So ratio of recombinants will be 151 over the total, so which will give us a frequency of recombination of 0.12, and that means 12%. And this percentage is basically what we use to estimate the distance 12% will be 12 centimorgans. This is the unit used by uh, Morgan to define the distance between two genes.